everybody. It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's time for me to do my weekly video. Uh, I wasn't on last week because I was probably busy watching a movie. I know that's not really being busy or an excuse, but not that really anybody noticed. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'll give you a quick update on what I've been doing, what I've accomplished, and then we'll get into the good stuff, the Axeman of New Orleans. So first things first, uh, I've completed chapter 8 of the Wax Menagerie. The chapter's called Nature's Poison. And I wouldn't say it took me a long time to write. It actually took me about a week or so, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And the cool thing about this chapter was I had two pages of notes, one page front to back. And... I had a bunch of vocabulary words that I wanted to incorporate and use in this chapter. And I used not only most of the notes from Hound of the Baskervilles, but I also used every single word from Hound of the Baskervilles that I found and The Invisible Man, the book that I had read for chapters 4, 5, and 6. No, excuse me, 3, 4, and 5. 3, 4, and 5. <clears throat> so I was actually really impressed by that. I imagine I'm the only person that's impressed by that, but uh, nevertheless, uh, chapter 8 is completed. I'm very happy with it. I'm obviously, when the book's completed, I'm most likely going to go back and add stuff by revise. I'm going to have to revise revise the book. I may add stuff. I may take, make, take stuff out. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm happy with what I have for chapter 8. Second thing, Second update, um, I've actually started running my first Amazon ads. Never ran an Amazon ad before. Didn't know how to do it. It seems really easy, but uh, it's really not. Actually, it is. It is It is really easy. It's way easier than Facebook. Facebook ads, I just feel like they want your money, but Amazon ads, they care about you. Um, don't quote me on that. Um, I've, I'm currently running five ads that I started from, I believe, October 15th until Halloween. So far, I have over 10,000 impressions. I have three clicks, but no sales. So, people told me to be... people. I took part in the Amazon ad challenge on Facebook, and uh, people were telling me to be patient. We would, we would share our... Uh, excuse me, my, my nose is itchy. They would tell us to uh, share our experiences and, you know, our progress... And I made a lot of progress, but then at the same time, I had no sales. So, people said it takes time, and, you know, just hang in there. I'm hanging in there. It's like three days till Halloween, and still no sales. But I won't be discouraged. Um, but anyway, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? The Axe Man of New Orleans. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this. Um, I found myself, I found I was repeating myself over on Twitter. So, uh. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I didn't take many notes because there was a, so much to go off of, but very little to take. So, <clears throat> between the day of May 23rd, 1918 and October 27th of 1919, the Axeman of New Orleans, the Axeman murdered six people. There were six victims. Six people died being struck somewhere by an axe. One thing worth noting, yesterday was October 27th, so it's been 101 years to the day. Was, yesterday was 101 years to the day that the Axeman of New Orleans last put his axe to good use. Well, good use to him. Bad use for everyone else. Uh, people would be spared if they played jazz. So, the Axeman told people that if they played jazz music and blared it from their houses and establishments, that they would be spared. And the city of New Orleans listened. And on the last night that the Axeman was going to murder people, he didn't murder anybody because everybody complied with his demand and played jazz music. Wow. I wonder if that's like the only case in the, of the world in this country of like some like a killer demanding that people do something and he he'll spare them 
seems kind of crazy that jazz music would do that thing. Um, it's also worth noting that all six victims were Italian immigrants. So either he was Italian himself and just didn't like his own kind, or he was racist and it was ethnically motivated. It's also suggested that it was mafia related, which, I mean, they're Italian, so I mean, I can, I can sort of see that. And anytime you can, anytime you can throw the mafia as being a possible, you know, suspect, it's believable. Suspects. There's only one. I only looked up one thing, but I imagine even if I went to a bunch of articles, a bunch of different things on Google, it would have told me the same thing. Joseph Momfrey. He had a record. And Joseph Momfrey was the pretty much prominent suspect of being the axe murderer, the axe man of New Orleans. The ironic part about Joseph Momfrey is that of his six victims, the last person that he killed was an Italian immigrant named Mike uh, Pepitone. In Los Angeles in 1920, Joseph Momfrey was shot dead by Mrs. Pepitone. This is to suggest that... Hello. Um, so yeah, so the Axeman was... Oh, excuse me. Joseph Momfrey was in Los Angeles and he was shot dead by the widow of Mike Pepitone, which was the Axeman's last victim. This is to suggest that Mrs. Pepitone knew who killed her husband and killed him. I also had seen a um, documentary, I believe on YouTube, that suggested that Mrs. Pepitone was having an affair with Joseph Monfrey. And Monfrey wanted her for himself, so he killed Mike Pepitone. And in retaliation, Mrs. Pepitone tracked down Joseph Monfrey in Los Angeles and as revenge, killed him. Now this would not only benefit her, if this were the case, this would not, like, either, you know, whether she, whether or not she was having an affair with him is beside the point. But if he was actually the axe man, she did not only herself justice and her husband, but pretty much all of New Orleans because, hey, I just got the serial killer. So, that's pretty interesting. Um, are there other suspects? Again, I only look up one thing, but I imagine most places are going to say that Joseph Monfrey was the Axeman of New Orleans. If that's the case, however, pencil, um, if that's the case, however, why is this case still unsolved 101 years later? That's what doesn't make sense to me. It's technically still listed as unsolved because I guess they couldn't definitively place evidence in everything on Joseph Monfrey, but he's probably the only legitimate suspect. You know, kind of like O.J., only... They didn't look... During the O.J. Simpson thing, they never looked at anybody else. When Aaron Hernandez murdered people, they didn't look at anybody else. So, this one seems kind of weird to me, because Joseph Monfrey killed more people than O.J. and Aaron Hernandez put together, and, I mean, I get it, it was a different time, I guess, but he, if he was the only suspect, I don't know that he was, or wasn't, but if he was the only suspect, then this isn't unsolved. So, so yeah. Um, this has been my video and my update. And uh, who do you think the Axe Man of New Orleans was? Um, I was going to wrap this up. But you know what? One more quick thing. We kind of let the Axe Man live today in popular culture because there's books written on him. There's... TV shows that depict him, there's movies that depict him, and we just won't let the legend go away, I guess. Maybe because we're fascinated by it. But, uh, but yeah, this has been my video on update on my book and on the Axeman of New Orleans. Now, I didn't mention this on Twitter, but since Saturday's Halloween, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll make a video of me talking about another mysterious case, or maybe I'll do a poetry reading from one of my books. How does that sound? I think it sounds like a cool idea, but uh, we shall see. Um, 
until then.